Hi, in this video I'd like to re-examine this fantasy that archaeologists have made up called the Mesoamerican ball game. There's no real evidence that anybody ever played a game like this, but they've postulated that people are jumping around trying to hit this uh, solid rubber ball off their hip and put it through these hoops on the side of these features they call ball courts. Some of them are eye-shaped, but they're usually an elongated feature. Even the rules they've made up show that they have no idea what they're talking about. And a weight of a nine-pound solid piece of uh, rubber, you're not going to be able to hit it very far. It's going to do some damage to you. But they postulated people are jumping around trying to hit this ball off their head because they saw these images on vases carved into stone and ceramic figurines and also in uh, codices in books. So there's these various figures and with uh, black round objects. So they decided it must be a ball game. So for a long time now, archaeologists and the public have just accepted that people are playing this ball game. And if they ever do re-examine what's going on in these pictures, it's always with an eye to proving that this is a ball game instead of going, well, wait a minute, are these people really playing a ball game? Um, how come these things don't look right? So I'm going to examine and show you some things. Like the size of this black object is pretty large. If that were a solid piece of rubber, you wouldn't really even be able to bounce it very well. It's going to weigh quite a few pounds. Some of these may be 30, 40, 50 pounds of solid rubber. And you're supposed to be trying to hit it through this little hoop. It's not even as big as some of these objects are. And then you see that the cloth wrap around them is up, 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 is up on their chest and not on their hip. And it doesn't look like you could actually hit a solid object off of any of this cloth and make it go anywhere. And then they're wearing these really elaborate headdresses that look almost like weather vanes. Some are sitting up on a pole that it can rotate on and have these little spinners on them. And then you look at all the guys, the positions they're in. Some are kind of look more off balance than anything. They're supposed to be trying to slide in and hit this ball with their hip or something. But it doesn't really look like they're doing that. They look more like they're falling over. And all the other guys just are kind of standing around. I just don't see uh, people playing this ball game that they made up. So let's take a closer look at these figures and I'll show you what I mean. This is kind of a standard three-person setup. As you'll see, the black object is fairly large. I was estimating two, two and a half feet in diameter. That would be pretty heavy piece of solid rubber. You would have a hard time just rolling it on the ground. The cloth they're wearing, it's tucked right up under their arms. It's often tri has this trifold baffled part and it's all held together with ropes and straps that come out the back and the bottom and the front. And then if you look, they have these really elaborate headgear on. I don't know why you would need that to play a ball game. And then look at the positions they're in. One guy's kneeling, another guy's standing. Uh, the one guy looks like he's in motion. Again, looks like he's just going to fall over and face plant on this round object. Look at another image. It's the same thing. This ball would be fairly large and heavy. The cloth they're wearing around their chest is, has this trifold, baffled look. And then there's straps and ropes coming out. They're wearing big, elaborate headdresses. Uh, the guy on the left is kneeling on an object, and the guy on the right. Uh, looks off balance like he's going to face plant in this round object. Another image shows the same kind of thing. This ball maybe would be a little smaller, one foot, one and a half feet across. Um, still quite heavy. You wouldn't be able to knock it around off your hip, especially off of the cloth that they happen to be wearing around their chest. 
elaborate, um, all wrapped up and tied up in an elaborate manner, like it looks like it's meant to be uh, unfurled or released with the pull of a rope. Big, heavy, um, elaborate headgear with spinners and the positions they're in. The guy on the right, uh, again, looks like he's falling over, and the guy on the left is just kind of leaning in. And they're always looking at this object. So, mind you again, archaeologists say that people are doing this, trying to bounce this ball off their hip. Yet I'm showing you there's not much uh, evidence that that's what's going on in these pictures. Um, this picture of the black object is really large, maybe two, two and a half feet across, um, really elaborately wrapped up cloth, trifolded, uh, baffled looking uh, devices around their, their chests and not their hips, large elaborate headdresses on um, poles with spinners. And then look at the positions they're in. Same kind of positions, people standing around. One guy looks like he's leaning. Um, gonna fall over. He's kneeling on a sled of some device. And this one's a little different. Not as, uh, you would think it's not as well done as the other, but that would be a mistake to think that somebody, uh, Maybe a novice or someone did this because the lines aren't straight. But I can show you in reverse that it's actually quite complex and that it's hiding all these images. These were made by very expert artists. These guys, again, have all this stuff wrapped around their chest and their hips and they have straps and ropes. This one guy appears to be sitting on some sort of uh, wooden chair or seat. He's leaning over. All the other guys uh, appear to sort of be in motion, but they're kind of just off balance. Doesn't look like they're trying to hit a ball off their hip. Now let's look at a couple different kinds of images. Um, these are really strange. You can see all kinds of crazy things going on in these pictures. Um, the two characters in the middle are holding round black objects. But that doesn't mean it's a ball. There's some indication it could be a, some sort of hoop, like the guy in this vase, who's reaching down and grabbing onto a rope and has the same sort of elaborate cloth wrapped around his chest. These figures where there aren't any sort of round black objects, but they have some of the same accoutrements, appear to be in some of the same positions. Actually appear to be animal skins and soft cloths, nothing you could hit a hard rubber ball off of. These guys are all lined up with some sort of cloth they're showing them. I think it could be human skin because it's the same color that they always depict human skin as. And let's move on to some of the stone carvings. These carvings show pretty much the same thing, that this round object is really huge. They have this cloth wrapped around them. It doesn't look like you could hit a ball off, and they're wearing uh, elaborate headdresses. And this guy looks off balance more than anything. And on the other side of this carving, the same thing. A guy that's in a strange position, wearing all this elaborate gear. Another carving showing that this round object is really, really large. This one has a glyph on it. And the same kind of character with the cloth wrapped around his chest, right up under his arms, and a big elaborate headdress. And it might show he has a light coming off his forehead. Another one shows this really large object 
round object, wearing elaborate gear, the sort of tri-folded, uh, baffled cloth up under his arm, strapped onto his chest, a big elaborate headgear. And if, of all these, this guy looks like he is kind of trying to push this with his hip, but I would remind you this ball would be uh, 40 or 50 pounds of rubber maybe. So it doesn't seem to make sense that he's actually trying to hit that through a hoop way up 20, 30 feet up on the side of a stone feature. Another one showing the same thing. A guy looks more off balance. And this one the, is different. The guy looks like he's reclining on a sled or a chair. Don't know why you'd be in that position to play a ball game. And another one showing the same thing. A guy's lying down on a sled with a really large object that has a glyph on it. And then maybe being pulled by a rope from the left. This figure has all the same things, except he has wings on. And if you look around the world, there are a lot of really similar figures to this in Indonesia, showing someone with wings that are strapped on around the shoulders and waist and this big uh, strap coming down between their legs. Back to a Maya carving showing a guy appears to be uh, more in a position of flight, has wings, this elaborate cloth around his chest, a big headdress. So let's move on and look at a couple of ceramic figurines. You'll notice in both of these that these guys have really heavy sweaters, knit material on. I don't know why you would want to wear a bunch of heavy clothing for cold weather while playing a ball game in the, the tropics and the jungle. And then look at his position and his arms. Um, how is that at all similar to what archaeologists say is happening in these figures? Another guy again showing the, all the quilted material he's wearing, including a knit cap. And if you look at the cloth around his chest and waist, it's like uh, huge. You would hardly be able to move wearing that, um, much less try to hit a ball off of it, which it's cloth, so it's not going to really hit a ball. ball's just going to kind of not do anything when it hits cloth. And then you see his position. He's kind of leaning and his arms are out. He looks more off balance than anything. And from an Aztec codec, you see this figure in the similar position. He looks like he's sliding along a layer of blood. So if you look at these stone hoops on these so-called ball court features, they have all this wear around both the inside and the outside. I don't know any rubber that's going to sort of wear away at a stone. And then there's all these other figures that kind of you can meld into that have some of the same uh, characteristics, but they're actually wearing these suits and helmets. And one more thing, if you look at these images and you flip them over, and sometimes if you uh, reverse the colors, things will show up a lot better. They often show hidden technologies like underwater diving, maybe some sort of projectile firing devices, and possibly even some sort of uh, primitive combustion engines. So this has been my review of the Mesoamerican ball game, something archaeologists made up using the very same images I've shown you here. You have to understand that 
these archaeologists came from Europe or were of European descent. When they looked at these images, they applied their own life to them and tried to understand them from that perspective. And all they could come up with was a game like soccer. All they could see were balls in a game like soccer. So they've tried to make this all fit into this game. You know, the hoops become goals, and these features become ball courts. And, but if you actually look at these images and the details in them, they don't appear to be showing anybody playing a ball game. It's really sad, though, that this game is now part of our culture and it's not going to go away. It's always going to be there. And archaeologists have done this time and time again where they've taken speculation and made it into fact. Once somebody writes it down and it gets cited a few times, it's almost like it's really the truth when, in fact, they're just making it up. So in future videos, I'm going to show you what all this stuff really means and what's going on in these pictures. It's very intense and very detailed. There's lots and lots of things to show you from catapults to different technologies for launching people into the air, which is what all these images show. Uh, it's going to take several more videos to get through it all, so I hope people will watch.